Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll get a look at Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers as they match up with the second-year man, Lamar Jackson, and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and M&T Bank Stadium. There's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. It's a rematch of Super Bowl 47 minus one Harbaugh. The Ravens and 49ers are underway. This is taken at his four. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out come the Ravens, led by the leading rusher amongst quarterbacks in 2018. In his second season now, Lamar Jackson. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. On, 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's Ingram. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Taken down at the 44-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, it certainly appears that in this game, someone has decided they're going to open up their playbook. First quarter, and we see that play. I like their style. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Second and 12, Jackson. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Richard Sherman. And he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Oh. 
So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So the face mask puts them in even better shape than they were in as they'll have a short field here on first and 10. Throwing now is Garoppolo. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. George Kittle, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. The dump off gets him only one, and now you're looking at a third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Ready for the second quarter, and it's our visitors with the football. They're staring up at a third and nine to start it out. Shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. They went with the dive look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. Last year's NFL leader in field goal percentage, Robbie Gold, on for the Niners' field goal. The wind is at his back here in the second quarter. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. CD, you know there were quite a few Bears fans back in January saying, why didn't we hold on to that Robbie Gold guy? Well, it's a legitimate question. 33 of 34 for San Francisco in 2018. The crazy stat of the year, he missed more extra points, too, then he did field goals, one, in the 2018 season. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more, thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And that is incomplete here. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. But it'll be second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's Jackson. He's got it to Ingram. Complete. And he's upended at the 33 following a good pickup of eight. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. They'll fake the give to Ingram, now Jackson. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. 
First down now, but the clock continues to move. They go play action now. Jackson. Caught by Snead over the middle. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Willie Snead. 46 yards. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk here is go, a big here decision here. First down, Garoppolo. And Selleck here, left side. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here Here's second and seven now from the 28. What's that in? What's that in? Garoppolo. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability go, to keep go, a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down, and he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Come on, fellas. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. You're under 30 seconds to go. Field position not great. Time to call it a half, wouldn't you say? Well, you know we all have that little extra gene that says let's push the envelope a little bit, right? What needs to be going through the play caller's mind right now a potential fumbled snap that can get returned, a strip sack that can get returned, right? Any of those types of plays, that should be a deterrent to calling something that could get you in big trouble. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. 
They'll keep it on the ground again here. And they're going to be waiting for him as they get him behind the line. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them guys we're right there just not playing as well as we need to let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game yeah they do we'll see if they can pick it up Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their 25 yard line here's Coleman and he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five now we've got whistles and a timeout here yeah looks like we've got a 49er that's down on the field while the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Here we go, here After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Off the play fake to McKinnon, it's Garoppolo. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Kenny Young, it'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Well, that last sack, it puts Garoppolo and the 49ers in a tough spot. They face a third and long. Garoppolo now. He's got his man, it's Kendrick Bourne. And oh, he caught it up, and it's picked up by the Ravens. And to the 43, so down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. 
Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now Jackson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Solomon Thomas, they'd love to see that from him as he slips in for the sack. Now, you've been around me a long time now. You know on second and inches. I love it when teams are aggressive and take a shot, but we just saw the downside to being that aggressive, didn't we? Now you've given up on a pretty likely first down if they had run the football, and they need to come up with something here on third. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. From the gun, it's Jackson. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Brought in left side by Sneed. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Now a handoff to Ingram. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Niners have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 34. Tucker's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to three. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Garoppolo and the Niners now trailing 10 to three. Just over a minute, 40 to play. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. They'll look to throw. 
And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. The 49ers moving hastily. They're scurrying to the line. Now Garoppolo to the right side, complete to Taylor. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So that one will be accepted. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. Here we go. A full start, bats him up five, first and 15. Throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. No timeout. You got to go quick here. here we go, Garoppolo here we go, here we go. hustling him back to the line now. Play fake there to Coleman. Now Garoppolo. And this would have been intercepted if he could have gotten the feet in. Instead, it's incomplete. Boy, that really could have turned this one upside down. All right, Charles, as a former defensive back, how disheartening to actually catch it but just not be able to stay in bounds there defensively. Well, extremely because you know the rap against us defenders is that we're frustrated offensive guys who can't catch. And he caught it. Just couldn't get his feet down in bounds. It's that second part that finished off the play for him. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. Back to throw, Garoppolo. That's going to be caught. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. To throw is Garoppolo. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not.
They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drive spanned five plays, and the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. And now here come the Ravens. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. So this helps to start a drive. After the penalty, it'll be first and five. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. to throw. They'll roll him out right. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the offense will get this one back. Boy, that could have been catastrophic at this late stage of the game, but they avoid disaster. So it's up now to one of the most accurate kickers in NFL history, Justin Tucker. He made his only attempt earlier. This for the win. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost-cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams, and in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street-free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And it's 
Incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.